today, we begin our long and tough journey down the road of probability. Now, this is one of the tougher sections that we teach, so you're going to want to make sure that you keep up with the assignments in class and the videos as well as the notes. So, we'll start off with uh, teaching you about some probability models and the rules. Now, a couple vocab terms. First term, we have a sample space. That's the collection of all possible outcomes. And the counting principle, which basically means if there are A outcomes on one task and B outcomes on another task, then there are A times B outcomes together. So, let's say that I roll a pair of six-sided dice. How many possible outcomes are there? Well, I'm going to use the counting principle and say that on the first dice, or first die, there are six possible outcomes, times on the second die, there are six possible outcomes. So that's going to give me 36 total possibilities. That's using the counting principle. Okay, now, we're going to create a chart to display the sample space and answer the questions. So again, we're uh, I'm rolling a pair of dice. So, uh, on the top, I'm going to put the possible outcomes for the first die, the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And down the side, I'm going to do the same. Okay, and I'm basically going to pair these up. So the first possible outcome that I could get is a 1 paired with a 1, which is known as a snake eyes. Uh, or I could pair up a 2 and a 1, or I could pair up a 3 and a 1, or a 4 and a 1 or a 5 and a 1, or a 6 and a 1. So that's basically a 1 paired with all the numbers 1 through 6. Uh, same thing going this way. This is a 1 and a 2. This is a 1 and a 3. 1 and a 4. 1 and a 5. 1 and a 6. Even though those immediately appear to be the same, because they're the same numbers, 2 and a 1 and a 1 and a 2 are two not completely different, but they're two different outcomes, so I have to represent those. You basically fill out the rest of this chart, okay, and that gives you all possible outcomes. This is 6 by 6, which gives me 36 total outcomes. So let's say I wanted to find the probability that I had a sum of 5. Well, I can easily go over here, and there's somewhat of a pattern, but 1 and 4 will give me a 5, 3 and 2, 2 and 3, 4 and 1. So basically, those right there, 4 out of 36, and remember, we're going to write these as decimals. So we'll go with 0 0.1111. Okay, a sum of 10. Well, we got 6 and 4, 5 and 5, and 4 and 6. So that's 3 out of 36, or... 0.0833. And last we have a sum of 8, 6 and 2, 5 and 3, 4 and 4, 3 and 5, 2 and 6. There are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 out of 36 possibilities, which is 0.13, whoops, 0.1389. Okay, so there is kind of your first model. It's just kind of making a chart listing all the possible outcomes. Okay, next. Uh, we will use an organized list. So let's say that you flip a coin three times. Organize a list of all possible outcomes. First, we'll just use the practice with the counting rule. Uh, how many total outcomes? So on the first coin, there are two possible outcomes. And on the second coin, there are two possible outcomes. And on the third coin, there are two possible outcomes, each heads or tails. Multiply those together, you get eight total outcomes. So it's kind of nice to go in knowing how many total possibilities. Okay, so I'm going to make a list of this according to uh, just kind of organize it. So if I flip a coin three times, there's a, eight different possibilities. I'm going to phrase that by the number of um, tail or uh, tails, let's say. No, heads. So um, zero, let's say tails. Okay, I could have one tail, I could have two tails, or I could have all three tails. Okay, so no tails looks like this. Head, head, head. All three outcomes had to be heads. Okay, one tail 
let's say the first one was a tail and the other two were heads. Well, I'm basically going to move that T over one each time. So the middle one, could, the second coin could be a tail, or the third coin could be a tail. Now, two tails, TTH, and basically I'm going to move the H each time. So the H could be the second one, the only head, or it could be the first one. And then last three tails, that's pretty easy, T, T, T. Okay? Now, uh, a little foreshadowing here. What is the probability of flipping at least one tail? Well, I know there's eight possible outcomes, and all of these have at least one tail. Now, I could count those up, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and say seven out of eight. Or, if I didn't want to count those all up, it's everything but the three heads. The three heads is one out of eight, so basically I could subtract that way. So keep this in mind. This is none. This is all but, or, or at least one. All right. The last thing we have uh, that we're going to talk about in this video is a tree diagram. So suppose a couple has three children. Use a tree diagram to list all possibilities. Okay. So uh, basically, we have the first child, and the possibilities are either boy or girl. Okay, so we're going to list this. Uh, it may be advantageous for you to watch the tree diagram and then try to copy it down so you know you have enough space. Okay, so on child one, you're either boy or girl. Now, from that, we're going to branch off. Okay, so after the first one, okay, child two could have been a boy or a girl, given that the first one was a boy. Or it could be a boy and girl if the first one was a girl. So we're basically going to branch off. So now we've got some possibilities. Boy, 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 girl. Girl, boy, girl, girl. Now from each one of these, we're going to branch off into the third child, which again, for each of the you know kind of strands before, it could be boy or girl again. Boy, girl here. Boy, girl here. Boy, girl here. So basically you get these possible outcomes. And all you have to do is follow the branches of the tree. So this first one is boy, boy, boy. Now we've got boy, boy, girl. We got boy, girl, boy. Boy, girl, girl. And girl, boy, boy. Girl, boy, girl. Girl, girl, boy. And lastly, all girls. Girl, girl, girl. Okay? So it's kind of the same way as this. It's just a different method using the uh, tree diagram. Okay. Now, let's talk about the rules. You should have the rules written down in your notes from uh, today in class. So I'll kind of refer back to these five main rules and kind of show you an example how to do all of these. Okay, so have those written down, have those ready to look at. So if you come from the South County, you know about the light at Park Street and Park Boulevard. I pass it every day and get stuck at the red lot a lot. Suppose we have determined that when we arrive at the intersection, the light is green about 35% of the time. What is the probability that the light isn't green? So we're going to say that the probability of a green light is 0.35. That's taking the percentage, moving to a decimal. What's the probability that the light isn't green? Okay, We're going to call that G with a little c, and that means complement. Okay, So that is rule number if we go back, rule number 3. All right, the probability that an event does not occur is 1 minus the probability that it does occur. This is called the complement. So this is rule number three. So the probability of G, not G rather, not green, is 1 minus the probability that it is green. So that's going to be 1 minus 0.35, which is going to give us 0.65. So we can say that the probability that it is not green is uh, 0.65, okay? And that's the complement rule. 
Everything else is 1 minus the probability of green. Okay, so we have determined that the light is green about 35% of the time. Suppose we find out the probability of the light being yellow is about 0.04. So we've got probability of green is 0.35. We've got probability of yellow is 0.04. What's the probability that the light is red? Now we're going to use a, a few rules here. Uh, the first rule we're going to use is the addition rule, which is rule number four. Okay, If two events have no outcomes in common, the probability that one or the other is simply the sum of their probabilities. These events are called disjoint or mutually exclusive. So I can't have a green and a yellow light. It has to be one or the other. So this is going to be rule number four, which is basically saying the probability of a green light or a yellow light is the probability of green plus the probability of yellow, which is simply 0.35 plus 0.04, which gives me 0.39. Okay, now, the probability that it's red is basically, that's the only outcome that's left. So if I know that all of the um, probabilities add up to 1, that's rule number 2, okay, all possible outcomes together have probability 1. I can simply take 1 minus uh, the probability of green plus the probability um, or probability of yellow. So it's basically 1 minus 0.39, because if it's not green or yellow, it's got to be red. So that's going to give me 0.61. Okay. We have determined the following probabilities. Probability of green is 0.35, yellow is 0.04, and red is 0.61. Let's think about your morning commute in the week ahead. So what's the probability you find the light red on both Monday and Tuesday? Now, this is going to be practice using rule number five, which is our basic multiplication rule. So if I go back and look at rule number five, Two events A and B are independent if knowing that one occurs does not change the probability that the other occurs. The multiplication rule is A times B, basically, is what you should have in your notes. So now, um, if I want to know of it being read on Monday and Tuesday, and tells me to multiply if they're independent. Obviously, the fact that it's read on Monday doesn't affect the, it being read on Tuesday, so these events are independent. So I'm basically looking for the probability of a red on Monday and a red on Tuesday. Since they're independent, that's just basically the probability of a red times the probability of a red again. So I'm going to get 0.61 times 0.61, and I get 0.61. Three, seven, two, one. Okay. Next one. What's the probability you don't encounter a red light until Wednesday? Okay. So, again, I'm going to use the independence rule. That's rule number five. Basically, what has to happen is, if I'm talking about Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday... Okay. On Monday, it has to be not red. On Tuesday, it has to be not red. On Wednesday, it's got to be red. Okay. So, uh, basically, because um, they're independent, I'm multiplying these. So, this is the probability of not red and not red and red. Okay. So, this is the probability of not red times probability of not red again times the probability of a red and I'm going to take not red which is 0 0.39 times 0.39 times 0.61 and get 0 0.0928 I hope this helps.